hey everyone welcome back in our previous video we learned how to draw an isometric circle using the approximate method but in this video as the title says we will learn how to do it using the ordinate method all right the approximate method video and my first ever isometric circle video will be linked below okay so we're going to begin with a circle it's the same size as our previous isometric circle it has a diameter of 1000 millimeters so we're using the same size right if you haven't viewed the previous isometric circle video or the previous two actually they will both be linked below so what we're going to do now is we're actually going to we're actually going to draw a square and the size of our square will be equal to the diameter of the circle so the sides of our square will be 1000 millimeters as you can see here all right so it touches the circle on four sides and we're just going to draw a horizontal and a vertical diameter line or dividing line for the square And what we're going to do is I'm just offsetting these lines with a distance of 125 millimeters in between them. So I'm putting some dividing lines and they're equally spaced. And what you will find is that the more dividing lines you have, the more accurate your isometric circle will be. So off camera, I just numbered the lines. You can see there from zero to four with zero being the center line and four being the outermost line. Right, so I've actually sped up the video a bit here. What I'm doing is wherever the lines cut the circumference of the circle, I'm going to draw a horizontal line and bring it out to the edge like this. So this video, the footage you are seeing now is actually at two times speed, right? Now, once we have these lines, what we're going to do is we're going to get the dimensions. We're going to see what the spacing is from the base of the square to the lines. So the first one is 15.88 millimeters. And then from once we get that first distance, I just take the others from each subsequent line. So the second one is 51.11 the third is 102.44 millimeters and these measurements are very very important whatever size of circle you're using you need these measurements the last one is 330.72 right so these are the different distances start beginning from the base of the square and then the distance between each subsequent line so we have those measurements excellent this is very good now what we're gonna do is we actually need to draw another isometric box again going back to our previous video you would have seen me draw an isometric box it's not a square because the angles are not at 90 degrees but it is a quadrilateral with all four sides being the same length and two of the lines are at 30 degree angles right so you can see i'm checking the dimension here and the length of each side is 1000 millimeters which is the same as the diameter of our circle now what we do from here is we basically transfer measurements from the original drawing to the isometric box so I'm going to draw a vertical line. I'm going to draw a 30 degree line like this. All right? It's not horizontal, but at 30 degrees. So we have that. So we have our four quadrants. <clears throat> right? So you can see that I took the vertical and horizontal diameters and I transferred them just that it's not horizontal in the isometric box. And we're just double checking the measurements. They are 1000 as you can see. 
Now what we are going to do is the measurements that we had previously, I am going to draw some lines along one edge of my isometric box and these lines will allow me to get the, the same spacing. So you can see me entering the dimensions 102.44. Um, before that we had 51.11 etc etc. And uh, you can see that my final line does end at the midpoint. So everything is accurate. So I'm just going to copy my baseline now and place it at the spacing or at the end points of the lines that I just drew. Now you have to do the same thing for the top of your isometric box. Right? I did it off camera just to save time, but you can see that they are basically a mirror image of each other. Right? Good. Now what we do is we... You can see the spacing between my lines here is 125 millimeters, as I mentioned earlier. So what I'm going to do is I am going to get some 125 millimeter spacings on my drawing. So that's what I'm doing now. And then my vertical line, I'm just going to copy it to each 125 millimeter spacing. All right, so we have to do this on both sides. We need the vertical lines on both sides of the isometric box. And again, I did it off camera to save time. Now you'll see here I have some circles highlighted. Now these are the points, these are the dots that I'm going to, that we are going to connect. I just did it on one half of the circle just to highlight them. So from the bottom or the base of the circle where it says zero, so zero will be in the middle and then one will be one line higher, two will be two lines higher, three, three lines higher, four would be on the edge and then you come back into zero. All right, it's pretty, pretty straightforward and um, the next step will be to actually draw the line. And you're going to draw it all the way around because you are doing a circle. If you are doing an arc, you could draw a part of it. We're going to use the spline command, spline fit. And you just come and you click by all the intersecting points, as you can see me doing here. You click there. You click, you come around. And then you come back down. So you just follow the order. So each time I get to an intersecting point, I click. And when I get back to my starting point, I press enter. And there you can already see the circle or the isometric circle in all its glory. So I'm just going to change the layer. And I trust that you learned from this video. Please like and subscribe.